in the very beginning, that first episode I ever did, it was not. I was like scripted and, and it was super polished and I was terrified. One of my superpowers I, I feel like is that I just am who I am because I have had to be a chameleon my whole life. I've had to try to fit in and adjust into different environments. And now I'm just like, you know what? This is who I am. And if you don't like me, that's okay. Trevor Houston, host of the wildly popular Who You Know Show. Thanks for coming on the show. Hey, I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So you started your show in 2018. Yes, 2018 in January. It was it was pretty crazy times back then. But and yeah. it was it was a video podcast at a time when I think everybody was doing audio. Yeah, yeah, everybody was doing audio back then. Uh, we. It was like a radio podcast. It was KVGI Radio. Mm -hmm. And so they did it um, video on uh, Facebook Live. And that's kind of where it started. And when you told your friends you're starting a podcast, was that back in the time when they would look at you and like, what's a podcast? Or, You know, back then, actually, it was, we're doing a radio show. Okay. Right? It wasn't even podcast. And I thought we were better than a podcast. But the reason why I thought we were better than a podcast is because of what you said. Podcast is audio only. Right. And so we were video and we had the radio, we had the, the, the radio show and we had the, the studio and we had like, I thought we were better than a podcast. Yes. You know, I, I, the way I envisioned podcasts was two guys in their, you know, closet with a couple <laughs> of microphones and, and a mixer, you know, right. Uh, but that was kind of how arrogant I was. I didn't realize the world of podcasting and the world of podcasting has evolved. I mean, it's, it's getting really cool. And he's been doing a weekly show, um, for now what, six years, mm -hmm. and you you aren't even clear which episode you're on. How much, what, if you had to guess. We're in the five to 600 range. Like it's, it's amazing. We ended up losing, this is the crazy part, we ended up losing about 250 episodes from that old studio. Oh, wow. Yeah, so KVGI went out of business during the pandemic, and one of my biggest mistakes, okay, you, it's a journey, it's sure, all a journey. Sure. One of my biggest mistakes was I didn't have control over the content, mm. right? It was all on their platform, and when they went out, there went my content. And you were just here yesterday. That's how we kind of got uh, uh, reacquainted, and uh, you had a big name yesterday. Yeah, Ken Coleman. Uh, he is um, a two-time um, best-selling author, and he's got a nationally syndicated radio show on the Dave Ramsey Network. He co-hosts with Dave Ramsey. Um, he talk, he's a career expert, talks about how to find your person, your purpose and your passion uh, in your career. So perfect for our audience. And how, how many people did we have in the studio? Uh, about 50. And that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, awesome. the energy was very electric. At one point, they were all kind of gathering in our lobby. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just, everybody was chattering. And I was like, man, this is lifts the energy of the whole company. Yeah. Um, I want to uh, play a clip from one of your shows. And this is actually like a short that you had created. I'm going to play the clip and then we're going to react to it. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and play the clip. Growing up, my parents kind of split at an early age. I think I was like eight years old, something like that. They split up and I ended up staying with my mom and love my mom to death. She's an amazing person. But right as they got that divorce, she got disabled. And so she wasn't working. She was on a lot of programs and things like that. And we had a lot of roommates, a lot of different people coming in and out of the house. I had so many different influences in my life at a young, early age. And my dad was always there, but I didn't necessarily want him in my life at that time because yeah. he was the discipline, he was the structure. And as an eight year old, you don't want discipline and structure and that kind of thing, right? So I had a lot of crazy people in my life and I was running crazy and I was doing a lot of stupid stuff that got me in some trouble. But it also sharpened me in a lot of ways because I wanna tell you, I learned how to be adaptable. I learned how to have empathy for different types of people. And I can communicate with just about anybody. I can identify with people because I grew up with so many different types. And so I wouldn't trade that experience even though a lot of those times were pretty rough as I was growing up. We didn't have a lot of money there was times we didn't have running water or lights so there were some really big challenges there i ended up getting in a lot of trouble because i was just running amok i needed a positive place to channel my energy and i didn't have that so i was channeling my energy in negative ways i ended up getting in trouble and i uh, was forced to move with my father and my mm. father is just an amazing person love him shout out to my dad he taught me how to work hard taught me how to save taught me how to run a business he's an entrepreneur he's a business owner and so that's really kind of where the story begins is that transformation that I made from being wild and crazy to finding a positive channel for my energy. That's where I would say it would start. 
Wow, and we should clarify that you were a guest on somebody else's show, yes. and, and that's a good friend of ours, mm -hmm. Julian. Uh, Julian Placino, yeah. yeah. What I loved about that is you're real, you're raw, you're honest, um, and I think so many people who approach a podcast feel like they have to be Dan Rather or something mm -hmm. like that. They have to pretend to be uh, an anchor man. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what, I, what I think is refreshing about your show is how real it is. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, um, in the very beginning, that first episode I ever did, it was not. I was like scripted and, and it was super polished and I was terrified, right? My very first episode. Um, and I remember the, uh, the owner of that studio, he was, we asked him like, hey, how did we do? <laughs> he was like, eh, that, was, that, was, uh, that was not so great. He's like, you need to just kind of just let it loose, man, you know? And yes. um, so, so we do, you know, it's, it's a lot more authentic. And, I, you know, that's one of, uh, one of my superpowers, I, I feel like, is that I just am who I am because I have, I have had to be a chameleon my whole life. Mm -hmm. I've had to try to fit in and adjust into different environments. And now I'm just like, you know what? This is who I am. And if you don't like me, that's okay. <laughs> and, 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 and I call it scrappy. You know, I grew up in Detroit. Mm, and uh, scrappy. I, I, had, I, had to, I had to learn street hustle to survive yep. in the mean streets of Detroit. Um, sounds like your humble upbringing really taught you to navigate and to connect with people. And that brings me to another point. I mean, um, doing a show is a great way to meet people. Ooh, yes. And you've met some of the biggest names in the business. Yeah, we've had some amazing guests. We've had uh, Grant and Elena Cardone, who are real estate moguls, you know, billionaires. Uh, they, um, I, I fully believe, w wait for it, uh, Grant Cardone will run at some point for president. He, he will. Um, that's going to that's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, we've had Grant and Elena Cardone. We've had uh, Ken Coleman, which we just had. I'm working on Dave Ramsey. Um, you know, a lot of big names and it's, it's been fun, you know, and one of the things about a podcast is it is a way for you to network Yes, and open doors that, you know, well, I'm always learning stuff from our clients and what you taught me is, you know, on social media, everybody tells you who their friends are mm -hmm. and, uh, you can see who Dave Ramsey hangs out with. Uh, mm -hmm. you can see who, uh, Grant Cardone hangs out with. And since you opened the door to Grant Cardone, I was uh, I was really impressed with the interview you did with him. I guess it's been a, a year or two ago. Um, yeah, that right. was during the pandemic. Okay. So it's been a few years. All right. But yeah, that was a great episode. All right, let's go ahead and roll this clip. I have a mission and I have some examples in my life that I've studied, people that weren't alive when I was, people that go back in history. Jesus is one of them. My whole life is based on, hey, I will do whatever it takes. There are people that I have studied in the present and in the past that have been tremendous inspirations to me. Some of the places where I have failed is I am so scared most of the time in, in, in trying to become someone that I am trying to like hook into anyone that I can get attention from in order to create a relationship. So I'm trying to set hooks so I can actually get people in the present time to either like me or hate me. But at least they're like, hey, I remember that guy said, you don't need money, okay? It does not take money to make money. It takes courage, it takes faith, it takes action, it takes persistence. Tell me, what, what was it like to have your identity stripped away, to, to go out with no money? Tell me about the show. I'm really curious yes, and um, excited about so it. So the name of the show is Undercover Billionaire. It premieres tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Discovery Channel. Or you can get the Discovery Plus app, by the way. They're going to be playing it at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, so you get a 12-hour start. I'm not supposed to tell anybody that. Discovery called me in January and said, hey, if we drop you off in a city you've never been to, Take away your money, your credit facilities, all your friends, all your contacts. Could you turn basically a hundred dollars? They said, we'll give you a hundred bucks. I'm like, we'll keep it. That's stupid. <laughs> this is good to zero. Don't be dumb. But, but they think a hundred dollars is money or something. And they said, your goal is to turn it into a million dollars in 90 days. And I'm like, you got to remember this is January, 2020. There is no COVID yet. COVID does not exist. There's been no talk of COVID. There's 3% unemployment, three and a quarter percent unemployment in the United States. We have the, the fastest growing economy we've had in, you know, 12 years. And um, I said, yeah, dude, I can do it. So Let's you roll. 
So you were let's pumped. Roll. You were pumped up. I said, let's roll. Let's roll. Let's, let's do, do it. it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And and um, I said, I just got to tell my family, you know, that that I'll have them out there, that I'll be gone about a week, and then I'll bring them out. And and the guy called me up and says, oh, you know, I don't think you want to bring your family on this trip. And I said, what are you talking about? He's like, have you watched the show from last year? I said, no, I didn't watch it. I heard about it, but I didn't watch it. I said, whatever he did, dude, I'll do 10x that. He's like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, let's do $10 million in 90 days. And as long as you drop me off in a city where they speak English, I'm going to hit $10 million, a $10 million business in 90 days. I've been thinking about this for 30 years about doing this. I just, if you guys are going to follow me around and document it, you're going to make me a damn, like a legend, a living legend if I can pull it off. So I said, let's do 10 million, pick the city and uh, let's roll. And, and he's like, you should go watch the show first. So I did, I went and watched it, called the guy right back. And I said, hey, I'm in, my wife's in, the kids are in, where you wanna go, when you wanna go. But I said, one, one condition, I said, I wanna bring a million dollars in cash to the president of Discovery Channel and drop it on her table and better a million dollars in cash that I can pull this off. <laughs> And you guys had such great rapport. Okay, okay, uh, kind of, uh, th now this was uh, two or three years ago. Fill us in, how did it turn out? So Grant, he did that show, uh, Undercover Billionaire. The goal was to hit $1 million business in 90 days. Well, if you know Grant, everything is 10X. That's his whole brand, 10X. So yes. it's whatever your goal is, you have to 10X that goal. So he went for a $10 million business in 90 days. He ended up hitting a $5.5 million wow. business in 90 days, um, starting from $100. Right. And that's his whole thing. Right. And so, I mean, that guy's a, a he's a, he's the real deal. He's a beast. But um, that episode, I'm going to tell you, I, I tell people all the time, that was the best, worst episode I've ever had. How do you mean? Because <laughs> it went sideways. All right. Let me tell you. So when you're dealing with a guy like him, you have their handlers, you know, their, their PR people and stuff like that that you're working with. I wasn't able to have any kind of conversation beforehand. We were already live when he pops in, right? So there was no pre-conversation at all. Sure. I wasn't able to tell him about the audience. Like he has no idea about our show. I mean, really, let's just be honest. He's just, he did like, I don't know, 20 interviews that day. Gotcha. He's going one, 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 right. right? Promoting his show. So anyways, I get him, which is great. And he comes in and uh, I didn't get to tell him that our show is a ministry. Like um, we're giving back, we're trying to uplift people. And he comes on pounding his chest because he just came off doing this thing, right? <laughs> he, he's like King Kong, like I'm king of the world, right? And uh, he's dropping all these F-bombs and he's doing all this kind of, you know, that's, that's him. And uh, I love Grant, but, you know, uh, there was one point in the episode, let me tell you something, I was so nervous. And I didn't know this about myself. When I'm nervous, I'll... I'll get caught in mouth. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Now, I didn't know that about myself. I found out from this episode. <laughs> so I didn't have any water. <laughs> and um, he made a comment. I asked him, well, when they dropped you off and you didn't have any food or anything, what, what did you do for food? And he said, I went, um, I went from vegan to eating wieners again. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, everybody's got to eat a little on the way on coming on the come up gotta eat a little oh wow right? and i'm like in my head i'm thinking oh my god i had just i had already turned my church onto this show i was telling my church about it and everything and this is live live this is live live and he's dropping all the f-bombs he's talking about right doing all this stuff. and i'm like oh my god in my head i'm like this is going so sideways and then i guess because i was so nervous i did that and he goes he goes, why'd you lick your lips when I said that? Why'd you lick your lips? <laughs> oh my God. And so I had to literally, I, I, I said, Grant, hold on, time out. I cut him off. I said, Grant, let me just tell you, this show's a ministry. We're trying to lift people up. And he totally did a 360. Like, I mean, I, I promise you, I know Grant, he is a professional. If I would have had a chance to tell him yes. what the audience was in advance, yes. he wouldn't have acted that way. He goes yeah. on the news and he yeah. does all this. Sure, sure. Right? But I didn't get that chance, so he's just doing his thing. But I tell people it was the, it was the worst in my mind. I'm like, this is the worst. This is going so sideways. This this whole thing is just blowing up in front of me. I go back and I'm I was because of that. I, there's clips in there. I get sides of Grant. Grant apologizes to me. He called me on that. the air. He apologized. Yeah, he he literally called me that evening and apologized. Wow. Like I got to see a whole different side of Grant that I don't think that other right. people 
right. get to see. I mean, it was the best, worst interview. I mean, it was amazing. I love that story. That's a great that story. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I, I drew from that is this 10x mentality mm. because most of us, you know, we set a goal and it's not a stretch goal. It's like a, a smart a, goal. Yeah. Smart. What is it? Uh, smart, obtainable, whatever. I don't know yeah. the acronym, but so like uh, as you're interviewing these, you know, these thought leaders, are, are you always kind of learning and drawing inspiration from these people who have led these amazing lives? 100%. That's one of the biggest things is I try to use it as almost like, like free coaching. Mm. Like I think about a guy like Grant Cardone, you'll get paid a hundred thousand dollars to do some coaching with somebody for a couple hours. Sure. I got him on my show for about an hour for free. Right. 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 And it's like, okay, yeah, I want to try to get some knowledge out of this guy, figure out yeah. what he's doing, you know? Well, you must be comfortable with me because we don't have any water out here in your, <laughs> <laughs> there's no dry mouth. Uh, let's do this. Let's pull up the Who You Know Show uh, website and scroll down it. And I want you to talk about the kinds of guests that inspire you like when you're mm. planning your show are you already looking out you know a week or two um in the future or how often do you schedule um yeah we have new shows every week um and you know I, like this image right here that's being pulled up you'll see a lot of motivational speakers uh you'll see a lot of people who are business owners entrepreneurs dave Meltzer, he's a great um he that guy made like a hundred million dollar business, lost it all, and then was able to get it all back and then some. Yes. So people like that, that have gone through, you know, challenges, adversity, overcame, you know, um, it's the grit, it's the mindset that it takes to become successful. And uh, I love people that have a great story. Um, that's what I'm looking for. If you can tell a great story, um, cause you gotta think, people are gonna watch it, but people are also gonna listen. Right. And when you're listening only, okay, you've got to be able to capture somebody's imagination sure. on a podcast. So storytelling, if you can tell a great story, um, yeah, that, that, that's someone I'm listening So to. in the last two minutes, I want you to just talk about podcasting because it's become so cool. I almost imagine every company on the tollway, their marketing department is saying to the CEO, where's our podcast? Where's our podcast? Uh, and you were really early to the game. For the person out there thinking about a podcast, uh, I always tell people, you don't have to be interesting, you have to be interested. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes you a great host, is that you know that your Who You Know show is not about Trevor. Mm -hmm. uh, Trevor's not an ego trip. You really spend most of the time on the show getting to know your guests. Yes. Yeah, and I, I look at it now, um, things have kind of shifted a little bit. I think there's really three elements to a great podcast. And for the longest time, I only focused on one. So one is this interview style podcast where sure. if I'm interviewing Jeff, I'm going to make you the star. I'm going to ask you all the right. questions and, and spotlight you and promote you, right? Yes. Um, so that's one style. But I, the way I look at that is these are the people that you want, the, the spheres of influence, the, the people who can take you to that next level, the Grant Cardones of the world, the Jeff right. Crilly's of the world who are, are influential and who... You know, hey, if I put um, some spotlight on you, maybe that, maybe that helps me. It's a little of reciprocity, Absolutely. right? Yes. So, so these are people that, um, again, uh, you want to spotlight. And then the second would be uh, live coaching. Okay. So let's say you have a client, bring them on yep. to your show. They're going to ask you the questions. You're coaching them, so this puts you in a position of authority. Yes. Right. Like if you were to coach me on how to create a, a PR business. Right. Right. And I'm asking you all the questions, Jeff, how do you do that? How did you do that? And you're going to coach me on how to do that. Right. So that would be the second one. And then, uh, the third one would to be more of a solo where I'm going to teach a subject. Right. Right. And the 10 reasons why you should do X, Y, and Z. Right. right. And again, that positions you as the export or the authority sure. so that it's not always because what I, what I started to find out was the, the podcast was always about someone else mm -hmm. and the audience never really got to know me very much. Right. So to have some episodes in there where the audience gets to know the host. Yes. Right. I'm, I'm so impressed with you. Uh, we're going to have to have you back again soon. Uh, we're going to end with his website, which is who, you know, dot show the great Trevor Houston. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the who, you know, show podcast. My name is Trevor Houston, and if you've enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing wherever you listen and leave us a positive review to help us keep the mics on in the studio. Until next week, that's the show.
It's all about who you know.